Welcome back to another review, and today I'm going to talk about volume two of How to Think When You Draw with Lorenzo. And last time we talked about volume one. And if you're new to here, hi, my name is JD and I do reviews like these product reviews. I also do rig reviews. I do animation analysis. I do animation lectures, animation news and all kinds of things on this channel. So feel free to browse around and subscribe and hit that bell button if you want to, so you don't miss any of my uploads and that's it. So last time, like I said, we looked at volume one. So today you're gonna look at volume two. This is what you get. These are all matching, same designs. One and two. How to think when you draw volume two. As always, intro, and here you have character designs, animals and monsters, vehicles, machines, elements, layout composition, natural world, world building. It's all very similar. The introduction and character design. And this time, talks about head angles. And some of these will be more focused on drawing versus actual application animation. But this is still interesting to see in terms of how they form, how they move. For animation of any type of in-betweens and just kind of how the flow is of certain parts of the body, like hair, for instance. And what I love are these reference expansion packs. I see here, expansion pack as it's mentioned here. But great reference if you mod any type of characters, any rigs, and you want different type of hairdos. Then eye direction, placement of pupils and eyes, and how they're structured in 3D. Staring syndrome, still very applicable to posing in animation. I'm definitely going to reference that too when I get to my facial animation eye section. Beards, again, good for reference. Tattoos, cloaks and shapes as always, if you do any kind of sim that might help you, this by hand is a bit trickier. This will be more of a drawing aspect, but good reference as always. Shoulder armor, space helmets. Come on, anything with space is awesome. Great reference, I love this. More reference. Stick figures. Now I love this because this is great for planning. This is great for me since I'm still in the middle, in the middle, I barely started, to kind of re-educate myself in terms of drawing and simpler drawings for planning and helping out with critiques and sketches. So this is great. I love this. Exaggeration, line of action, balance, great page. Flip shape characters, jumps. Now this goes actually more into animation stuff where you look at posing and the different extremes, the in-betweens. And then chapter two, animals and monsters. This time about teeth. I think this is really cool too, especially if you have controls on your rigs that let you change and shape the tooth, not the overall, but also the individual teeth. Just to get a bit more asymmetry, a bit more of an organic feel to it. Hoofs and then dragon wings. You got your posing in there. Reference fur. Rabbits, you got specifically about rabbits and dolphins. T-Rexes, who doesn't like animating dinosaurs? So you got your dinosaur page here and reference. Ghosts, never animated a ghost. Hmm, got some ideas. Chapter three, vehicles and machines. And just like before, I love that idea of just thinking about the leans and certain designs that can give your even static, quote unquote characters, a bit more personality and appeal. Like stuff like that is great, I love this. So vehicle through lines, such a great page. Monster trucks. Monster drug reference, battle damage reference, siege weapons, that's an interesting page, helicopter design, pirate ships, rocket thrust, that's kind of neat too, I love this here, this is the stuff that I'm really interested in where you have just that line and the flow of it, that's something that you can animate essentially by hand in 2D for your clips. Chapter 4, elements, small flames, definitely something to look at if you want to animate this by hand, got more reference, gold, light rain, I like this, it's very specific that it's light rain, sand, Anakin would not like this chapter, flags, flag reference, space, the final <laughs> chapter five layout and composition again love all this because this time it's more about contrast and just as it says here small medium and large just the sizes how you put different size characters or objects together how it can change the feel of a shot the composition character design this is great contrast i'm huge about contrast i can only agree with this contrast 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 love that just in terms of ids but also for reference how you could compose a shot i'm seeing examples for that cross contours Shatter technique, that's interesting. More reference for shatter technique. Changing one thing. I think this is really interesting where you have a design, like it says, you just change one thing and how it can really change the perception of a design or the look of a character. Not getting very specific with composition using triangles. Two to one spacing. Definitely interesting here for your composition and shot composition, multiple characters, if you have that in your shot. Silhouette thumbnails. Anything with silhouette is always important for animation. Definitely look at that. Just, I'll also love this, just in terms of lighting as well, how much you can bring out or hide. This is especially for animation conversations. So how you compose a shot, how the characters are framed, frame within a frame, something in the foreground or not, it's a great page. I love this here, the stacking overlap. It's definitely more dynamic and interesting with interaction for your dialogue shot. Sword fights, sword reference. Chapter six, natural world. Getting into organic elements with webs, 
Pebbles and gravel. Mountains, mountains, mountains. More mountains. More lambas, Brett. Roses. That is very specific. Roses. Vines. That's cool. Overgrown vegetation. Forests. But again, I like all these little thumbnails. I love that in terms of a shot composition and framing. I love this. More. Come on. I mean, you see this and just, oh, I want to plop characters in here and, and animate within those environments. I love this. It's a lot of love here. Forest part C. This time, a very widescreen composition. Oh, it's so interesting how you can do disorientation, unease, protection, trepidation, just the way you compose elements and characters to give a certain feeling for your shot. Part D, forests, more reference. Chapter seven, world building. Oh, chocolate. There is a chapter specifically for chocolate. I have to do something with chocolate. Just look out for that in the future. Bottles and glasses, pillows and cushions, baskets, more baskets, chains, lamp posts, stairs, more stairs, stone columns. Just love this, how as you start a shot, so you don't have a static, clean CG element, you can look at where do you break things up? Where do you put things on the floor? How? Do you, what's the angle of the camera? How do you make this a bit more lived in and organic, then you plop in a character to animate in. So good. Train tracks, detail at distance. It's actually pretty neat. I like this. Cityscapes, more cityscape examples. And we are at the end, some other books you may enjoy. Sketchbooks and other collections. Here's 10% of volume one. It's going back to what we talked about last time. Comics for all ages. And don't forget, they have a ton of these on their Twitter account for free. There's a lot you can get from them. And that is the end. And that is the end of the book. And like it says here, don't miss out on future volumes, mail at me, Lorenzo2, here's the email, so you get notifications for all of their Kickstarters and their news, because you can't buy these in a store, so watch out for the Kickstarters as they release new books and include all the books for a new bundle that you can buy. There's a volume three coming out in the future, so look out for that, but just generally follow them on Twitter, they really post a lot of tips, and not just from them, but from other artists, so it's a really great source and, and, and very curated stream of education. And speaking of education, if you found this educational and you're wondering how I apply this to any I do have workshops. Check out my playlist with the workshop examples. And if there's something that works for you and you want to sign up for my workshops, yes, I'm shoehorning my workshops into a product review. <laughs> Other than that, that's it for this book overview. And if you like these, you don't want to miss anything again, you can subscribe at any point if you want. Hit that bell button so you get all the notifications. And if you're still watching this, as always, thank you for your patience and watching this until the very end. That's it for me, and I'll see you in my next upload.